Donald Trump is broadcasting his intent to go full dictator if he's elected in 2024. And I say this because we recently learned that he's plotting revenge against his political opponents and former allies who turned on him. And he's even mulling a plan to invoke the Insurrection Act on his first day in office to use the military to violently shut down citizens protesting his inauguration. Now, additionally, he's planning an unprecedented crackdown on all forms of immigration, including legal immigration, by ramping up raids and rounding them up and placing them in sprawling concentration camps and deporting millions per year. And white nationalist Stephen Miller says it will be the most spectacular migration crackdown. Now, on top of that, his allies are currently forming a pro-Trump army with, quote, up to 54,000 loyalists across government to rip off the restraints imposed on the previous 46 presidents. Axios further explains these foot soldiers would be ready for legal, judicial, defense, and regulatory and domestic policy jobs. His inner circle plans to purge anyone viewed as hostile to the hard-edged authoritarian-sounding plans he calls Agenda 47. Now, none of this is surprising at all. If you're already aware of Project 2025, I'll link to a video that I did about that before down below. But this is a plan, essentially, to seize control of the administrative state and fill positions at all levels of government with Trump loyalists. Anyone who is not a Trump loyalist will be fired. Now, this plan to recruit Trump loyalists right now is part of Project 2025. Axios explains the government in waiting is being orchestrated by the Heritage Foundation's well-funded Project 2025, which already has published a 920 page policy book from 400 plus contributors. Think of it as a transition team set in motion years in advance. Heritage President Kevin Roberts tells us his apparatus is orders of magnitude bigger than anything ever assembled for a party out of power. In other words, Project 2025 is already well underway right now. They're doing it. They're executing the plan. Now, Trump's first order of business has been to consolidate power. He's been pretty open about that. And there are people already forming a pro-Trump army for him at this very moment. Now, if you're thinking that this all feels eerily similar to what Putin did in Russia or what Erdogan did in Turkey, you wouldn't necessarily be wrong. But to me, this feels a lot more like Mussolini or even Hitler, arguably, based on his own rhetoric. Case in point. In honor of our great veterans on Veterans Day, we pledge to you that we will root out the communists, Marxists, fascists, and the radical left thugs that live like vermin within the confines of our country. Now, he also reiterated those comments in a tweet on Truth Social, writing, in honor of our great veterans on Veterans Day, we pledge to you that we will root out the communists, Marxists, fascists, that's ironic, and radical left thugs that live like vermin within the confines of our country, lie, steal, and cheat on elections, and will do anything possible, whether legally or illegally, to destroy America and the American dream. The threat from outside forces is far less sinister, dangerous, and grave than the threat from within. Despite the hatred and anger of the radical left lunatics who want to destroy our country, we will make America great again. Now, in response, Brian Tyler Cohen shared this German cartoon published in 1939 depicting Jewish people as vermin being swept out of Germany and not being let back in. And Trump's promise there to root out leftist vermin feels very similar to that Nazi cartoon. Now, Mehdi Hassan of MSNBC is going to give us some additional context and comments from Trump that are explicitly Hitlerian. Vermin. That's not a word we often hear used in everyday conversation. In fact, it's a very specific word that carries a very specific historical connotation. It was a word frequently used by Nazis to dehumanize Jewish people during the Holocaust. For example, according to historical accounts, in 1939, Adolf Hitler told the Czech foreign minister, quote, This vermin must be destroyed. The Jews are our sworn enemies. Now, this isn't the first time Trump has been caught echoing the rhetoric of Nazis and white supremacists. A few weeks ago, he said that undocumented immigrants were, quote, poisoning the blood of our country, which again echoes the rhetoric of Hitler, who made similar remarks in Mein Kampf. So there you have it. An ex-president and current frontrunner for the GOP presidential nomination, not once, but twice in just the last few weeks, taking a page right out of Hitler's Nazi propaganda playbook. Yeah, it just kind of feels like maybe this is cause for concern, maybe a little bit.
And uh, believe it or not, there is more examples. Patriot Take shared this graphic from Midas Touch, which shows more parallels between Hitler and Trump when it comes to quotations. From the call to take care of the threat from within to one people, one family, one glorious nation, once or twice, I think, could be viewed as a coincidence. But he has channeled Hitler too many times for this to be coincidental. I think he's doing this purposefully. Now, there's a lot going on in the world, but still, that comment did not go unnoticed and predictably led to a lot of criticism. So you would think that Trump's spokesperson would try to clean up the mess that he made by sanitizing the message and trying to clarify his comments by making it seem more benign. But Trump's spokesperson basically doubled down and said the same thing that Trump said. The Washington Post reports Stephen Chung, a Trump campaign spokesperson, told The Post, those who try to make that ridiculous assertion are clearly snowflakes grasping for anything because they are suffering from Trump derangement syndrome and their entire existence will be crushed when President Trump returns to the White House. Chung later clarified that he meant to say their sad, miserable existence instead of their entire existence. Ah, okay. Well, I, for one, really appreciate the clarification, Stephen. It makes me feel so much better. But listen, we are talking about a presidential candidate who could actually win that is threatening to root out his ideological opponents that he views as vermin. Now, as an electoral strategy, this feels pretty stupid because independents and normies who don't like Biden but were considering Trump might be turned off by that kind of rhetoric. They might find it off-putting. But the goal isn't to make an appeal to voters. Trump's goal here is to instill fear in voters. It's a tactic used throughout history by, you guessed it, dictators. But don't take my word for it. Let's listen to historians who are telling us this. The Washington Post continues. The language is the language that dictators use to instill fear, said Timothy Naftali, a senior research scholar at Columbia University School of International and Public Affairs. When you dehumanize an opponent, you strip them of their constitutional rights to participate securely in a democracy because you're saying they're not human. That's what dictators do. Ruth Ben Gayet, a historian at New York University, said in an email to the Washington Post that calling people vermin was used effectively by Hitler and Mussolini to dehumanize people and encourage their followers to engage in violence. So, in essence, he is laying the groundwork for mass violations of our civil rights and civil liberties. And if he is able to successfully dehumanize all of us and his political opponents or anyone that he deems communist or fascist, it's going to be much easier for the rest of the public who aren't demonized to accept our subjugation after he gets them to think of all of us as vermin rather than fellow Americans or human beings. And again, this is not speculation. He is literally mulling a plan to violently shut down protests using the military on day one. Nobody said that they're going to protest him yet. I assume that they would if he were to be elected, but he's already saying we're not going to let that happen. Now, I just want to repeat that. He is considering using our military that we fund that's supposed to protect us against us if we protest his inauguration. So obviously he doesn't care about free speech, but I think most people knew that. But his intent here is horrifying. So, I mean, this campaign is truly unprecedented in the sense that we have a political candidate who is running to be a dictator in a democratic election. And he's conspicuously channeling Hitler again and again and again. I mean, I don't want to sound like Chicken Little here, but I feel like this is something that maybe we should be concerned about. I think that if you're not worried at this point, you're not paying attention. When somebody is running for president who can win... And they say, I want to be a dictator, and I'm coming for my political opponents, and that includes you leftists, you liberals. I think that we should pay attention to that, because if we don't, we're doomed. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.